All right, we're here live. I'm solo. At the Santa Monica track. You're you're uh, center stage right now. I am. You and the uh, blue skies here in Santa Monica, California, with no with no clouds in the sky. Yeah. What do you, you think of my hoodie? You have your. Oh, I like the uh, super rare Muhammad Ali. Do you like this design? Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah. We have three different designs. The oh. There's there's two covers See, Ali, for the hoodies. Right? Ali still in his day. Says, I will bring peace to the world. That's still uh, I know. Incredible. Isn't that incredible? Yep. Like who else? What what other what what yeah. boxer would say that? But it's true. He he. I'm going to bring peace to the world. He says I'm the true <laughs> world champion of all races and religions. Yep. There you go. He was the peacemaker. He That's wasn't. Right. He wasn't. I love this. Right. Hang on a second. A lot of sayings. I didn't realize that many sayings on the on yeah, that well, uh, you know. artwork. So I got one. I brought you, Mike, I didn't know you were going to be here, but maybe, see, Tom, Tom, you're just getting back from vacation, so yeah. maybe you're an extra large now. <laughs> so if you're, if you're an extra large, you can't have, these are two larges. I got, yeah, largest, largest so I bought one for I didn't you eat, and one for Coach. I didn't eat that much sushi in the Japan. But uh, if you're, if you're an extra large now, you know, one of these can go to Mike Styles. so. Um, but, we, uh, we can give, we can is, give Mike one later. Hey, Coach, you hold this. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Happy holidays. Uh, and uh, this is the other one. Can Japanese wrestler beat Ali? Oh, so that yeah, that's, was, that's talking the, about. This is 1972. That was Antonio that's a nice one. Inoki. Yep, that was Inoki. That fight. And, that's right. You know, all this, they got all this stuff going on. But uh, I love it. Anything with Ali and the ring, you put those two yep. names together, and it's uh, it's very special. I was fortunate so, fortunate enough to, to work with, uh, yeah. to work with uh, Muhammad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. For, yeah couple of appearances that he did uh, last week i wore the the super rare so that's those are available if you guys want these as gifts so what is it ring no go, TV? no go to go to super rare go to super rare shop.com and then click on the muhammad ali line because they have the ring magazine t-shirts and hoodies uh, and there's also a, a tank top for women uh, uh but they also have just other muhammad ali uh, licensed, they license, uh, uh, yeah, uh, merchandise, yeah. and uh, they have a jacket, a Cassius Clay jacket that I wore last yeah. week. I showed yeah. Coach. It is just the best thing. It's, it's, yeah, it's a really perfect gift. Yeah. Said anything with Muhammad on yeah. it, uh, his image. And they have a store, actual store in Hollywood. Yeah, and on Melrose Place. Melrose. That's right. And one in New York. I, that's where I got these. I finally Cynthia visited it. There, yeah, and then there's uh, they have two locations in the New York City area. Yeah. Do they have Mike Tyson stuff? Or? No, I don't think so. They have Bruce Lee stuff, though, which is the is best. Your, is your hat a tribute to the Rose Bowl? No, it's coming not. up. It's just me <laughs> trying to protect myself from the sun. Okay. Uh, so, um, so let's talk about boxing for boxing, a week. Yeah, we had a few fights. We had uh, Chavez Jr. fighting. Yeah. How much guess, money did uh, he make? Uh, uh, I, I got a question for you. Before yeah. we go into the boxing, do you think he regrets not taking that? 12 million guaranteed offer from top rank at the time to fight Triple G. I don't think he regrets it. You don't think he did? I don't you think, think he, he cares. made more since then? I, I think it was important for him to win a world title to prove that he, or you think he, he knew could he be a real fighter. I think he knew he would have broken his nose against Triple G, and that's why. I think he knew that the Triple G fight would have been um, a horrible beating, maybe humiliating. Not that he minds humiliation, but. Um, I, I think after he won the, the WBC middleweight title, right. he defended it a couple times, and that was enough for him. He's like, okay, I've proven I can do this at the highest level. And then from that point on, I think after he lost to uh, Sergio Martinez, I think it was just about making money. Yeah, at and, that point, he would have made so. $7 million guaranteed, and then $5 million, even if he lost $5 million, that's $12 million, and then he still could have built on that uh, $20 million. But people at that time, Doug, and you probably know better than most, were negotiating... We were trying to get people in the ring with Triple G like it was the last fight of their they career. They wanted retirement money. It's like the last fight of their career. Yeah. Like they, they didn't want to talk about, you know, options. And And they didn't want to lend their name to build up Golovkin. Like like they were jealous of Golovkin. Je Golovkin was on the uprise. He was selling out arenas selling on both arenas coasts. All over the world. And they were like, I don't want to help this guy out. I'm already jealous that in a few short years, somebody from Kazakhstan has a name that is as big as mine or bigger and they're like, I'm not going to lend myself to that to that Golovkin train. I'm not going to help that bandwagon. Strange, and that's how people think, unfortunately. The strange thing about that Triple G phenomenon was, unlike, I mean, there's a lot of fighters who don't sell tickets, who don't bring a lot of money to the table, and then they say, well, I'm avoided, you know, nobody wanted to fight me. But Triple G, we were offering 
career high money. Yeah. And offering all the titles. Multiple world titles. And people still didn't want to fight him. Yeah. So it's just it was bizarre. I've never and I've never dealt with you anything, understand anything like that, that before. Tom, take the zoom out. Put the zoom out. You make me stand fifteen feet back to catch the It's board. not it's not zoomed in? No. No. Oh, look. Well yours is yours is zoomed out. You know, but I think at one time, I, I think at one time, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. was a world-class middleweight, and um, in part because he was so much bigger than the other middleweights, you know, weighing at 160 and coming in at 175. Well, he ruined Sergio's knee. Yeah, he did. It was, that, was, that was a very physical fight for Sergio, even though Sergio dominated that fight, and, and Jr. almost had him out of the air in the final round. That was another one we couldn't get, we couldn't get that uh, Sergio Martinez fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you guys have done well. You guys had it. You guys. Uh, he's done, uh, he's Golovkin is a is arenas. a first ballot Hall of Famer, and and you know, <laughs> Junior will never be a first ballot. He'll never be in the Hall of Fame. But his old man is beyond Hall of Fame. His old man is is a true icon, a true legendary fighter, and he has that name. Senior, uh, so he's been yeah. able to to really half ass it in there, mail it in, um, and they still bring him back as um as, you know as as unworthy as he was of fighting Canelo Alvarez. He had a lot of fans. Of 2017. Chavez, that was a huge uh, event. Chavez had half the fans. It was fan a huge. It, it did, and and it was it was for Cinco de Mayo and, uh, weekend of 2017, and it was it was very lively all week, early on in the week in Las Vegas. So and he, carried, he can do that. He carried the ticket sales in Arizona. He that did, was actually. Yes. I was talking to Eddie and Money Barlow. That was actually where Chavez Senior had his last fight. Yes. Was that, so that Grover was, Wiley? That was the connection yeah. uh, there to that casino. And then Chavez Senior actually was doing a lot of promotion yeah. for that for that show. And frankly, they didn't even know which way it was going to go. Remember when they had the uh, the court order? Yeah. Uh, or the injunction saying that he was able to uh, fight, although Nevada had to put him on suspension. Yeah, a lot of people were betting that um, Jacobs would wind up entering the ring against Gabe Rosado. Rosado. Yeah. Rosado would have put up a better fight. Though. I mean, Rosado. Let's put it this way: Rosado wouldn't wouldn't quit after five oh, rounds, Dave, particularly doing as well as Chavez did. Dave thought Chavez did well for being out of the ring for. Uh, he did. Yeah, I thought he looked good too. Two years, three years. Yeah. He just doesn't have the he doesn't have the yeah. character to, to well, stick it out. What were you saying before? You can't feel sorry for Danny Jacobs for the, the weight. No, the no. I, I was kind of hoping that Chavez would screw up the weigh-in because Jacobs has done that a couple of times. A couple of times. You know, he's you know he's. he's I like Danny. Been a contracted Danny's a great weight, guy. and he doesn't. The, the weight thing yeah. against uh, Triple G, and then well, let's say I, I, I don't, Jacobs won't mess up the weigh-in, but the second if there's a second day weigh-in, he's gonna be like he'll blow that off. So it's like, all right, you're in with the dude who will blow off a first weigh-in, the first day. Weigh -in. So Danny got his first win at super middleweight. Yeah, looks good. He was a, he he was a big, good. big super middleweight. Talented dude. Yeah, I want to uh, see him uh, fight other. Super then we had last uh, last night we had Tony Harrison in the rematch with uh, Charlo. Yeah, terrific fight. That was a really Tony, good junior middleweight title bout. I've known Tony for a long time. He was actually one of the few guys that Emmanuel Stewart would bring in yeah. as a, a junior middleweight to spar with Vladimir Klitschko. Yeah. Well, like Jonathan Banks, Harrison's like one of the last at the Kronk gym. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. folks who are actually from Detroit. We bring in uh, Tony Harrison. We bring in Dominic Galton. Yeah. Both from uh, Detroit. Both yeah. from the Kronk gym and. Uh, uh, it would be. It wouldn't be true sparring. It'd be more speed work, sure, and defensive work with Vladimir. But uh, still, even so, getting in the ring with a heavyweight like yeah. Vladimir, fast hands, big punch. It was. Uh, it was. It was good work. Yeah, I thought he. he, he, he I, I was gonna say I thought he boxed a good fight, but actually he fought a good fight because after the knockdown of the second round, he, up, he, came he up became the against. aggressor right. and he, he was pushed Charlo back. back right? Charlo doesn't back. box, doesn't fight as effectively backing up as he does coming forward, but he does throw a lot of bombs and he is a big dude. I had so it was a close fight. Up until the stoppage, yeah. I had him winning. I, I gave the edge in rounds to Harrison because um, I thought he blocked a lot of Charlo's um, punches and he had the straighter shots and I thought he was a more accurate puncher. Um, but their work rate was about even. I just gave the edge to the guy who was forcing the fight. He was coming forward. I thought his jab was better. Both guys were working the body, but I thought that Harrison landed cleaner punches. You gotta give Charlo credit. He finished strong. Yes, he does. God took his title back. Yes. Um, people had a funny feeling if we were gonna go to the cards, what would happen, but yeah. uh, Charlo didn't let it go to the cards yeah. like the first time. So he made sure uh, not to let it go to the cards. He's 
thought it was a champion again. You gotta, oh. give, you gotta give him credit for he, uh, taking his belt back. He's a player at 154 pounds. And you want to see him in there against Julian Williams? Yeah. You want to see him in there against Jared Hurd? If Hurd can continue sure. to make 154 pounds. I'm not sure if he's going to keep making 154 again, so sorry about that. I've heard Chuck. different things. Again, at some point, Chuck is going to be a player. That, that 154 division is, uh, is, and Tom, uh, is pretty hot. People are sleeping on Boa Chuck. I don't know if they're sleeping, but uh, no, they are. he's making a statement. No, they Definitely know who he is, statement. but they don't look at him as like a blue chip prospect yet. And I know this because I put out there, I put out there's a bunch of guys from uh, Eastern Europe, Central Asia, that oh, yeah, are saw, junior that middleweight. Tweet, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're junior yeah. middleweight prospects. They're all undefeated. And I said, if there was a four-man tournament saw that. with yeah, these that guys, was, who yeah. wins it? Nobody said Boachuk. So I said, okay, I'm going to make note of this. Yeah. Because, Bo see, those, those other guys like Madrimov, they're very eye-catching. Powerful guys, uh, maybe they had better amateur careers. Uh, they're being moved a little faster earlier on in their professional career. They've got that punching power, as does Boachuk. But they, some of these guys have just some one hitter quitter Boachuk power. Boachuk has that wear down. He grinds you down. You down and so Boachuk is being overlooked right now. But I think Boachuk is made for the pros. He's rise to and he's been developed well. And I think he's gonna. He's a sleeper. To me, he's the dark horse. He's the dark horse prospect. Who's his yeah, promoter? I put my money on Bolger. Yeah, say, so do I. <laughs> Who's his I, promoter? I think eventually, he's going to outdo those guys. I think so, yeah. yeah. Seriously. Who's his promoter? So, does he have a promoter? promotions with that. A lot of folks were nervous because his last fight of the year, his fifth fight of the year, was on a Golden Boy card. And everyone's like, what does that mean? Oh, my God. Well, we worked out a deal with uh, Eric, uh, okay. Eric Gomez, and, and Eric was gracious enough to put him on the show. Cool. Off TV. TV, but it was, it was the main thing about that fight. Uh, look, the, uh, the fight before that, when he won that WBC Continental of America's yeah. title against uh, Brunson, um, yeah, that was that was kind of his breakout fight. Yeah. And then this was a kind of a fight to get in before the end of the year because sure. you know, Doug, as much as anyone, it's good to have activity. This was his fifth fight of the year. Yeah. So and this is his that. third. This is his third year as a professional. Right. So his first first two years, he fought six times a year. And even the third year when he, when he stepped up the, the competition yeah. considerably, yeah. still got him five fights. It's very rare. Freddie Hernandez. Yeah. Had a good year this year. And then Excellent next, year. Next year, we're going to look to step him hey, up. Hey, Dougie, who fought uh, 27 times in 1937? Oh, uh, that's got to be Henry Armstrong. What and was he, and, he won, and he won, and he won uh, 26 of those fights by knockout. Right. And one of them, and one of them was a stoppage of Petey Sauron, who was the featherweight champ, who had never been stopped in something like 125 fights. And Hammer and Hank just beat him down. There were a couple of, so who else was on uh, any other notable fights on the, on the, either one of those shows? There was uh, one prospect. Well, that Carlos Baldaris got, ba yeah. yeah. got knocked out. Got I, knocked out. I didn't see that coming. He was supposed to be a blue trip prospect. Right? He's an Olympian. Olympian. He, yeah. One, I mean, that first knockdown. That was crazy. Hey, this is boxing, dude. He can come back. Sure. I never. Yeah, you you don't. You don't back. write guys off. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it, it happens. I mean, Vladimir Klitschko suffered an early stoppage. He ran out of gas against uh, Ross Purity. Purity. Um, and then he got beaten by uh, Corey Sanders. Corey Sanders. Brewster. That was shocking. And then the the well known uh, yeah. Lamont Brewster called that right one. after Bill Slayton <laughs> had passed yep. away. Yeah. That was part of the reason Bruce I played Lane. That yeah. was a hard pick. Very pit. emotional, yeah. Yeah. And then Vladimir went on under the great Emmanuel Stewart, went on to one of the greatest heavyweight championship runs. He was unbeaten for history. eleven years. Yeah. His world his world title, his second reign as a heavyweight champion, lasted almost ten years. It was nine and a half years. And something like eighteen title defenses. Yeah. Wow, yeah. what what what's yeah. that? And selling out soccer stadiums Jesus. not only in Germany but all throughout Europe. Good draw in New York City. At in New Park. York, sold out the garden a couple of times. Yeah. Calvin Rock, uh, Brian Jennings. Um, he sold out Wembley Stadium there was a, there was against Anthony Joshua. That did so well. I think he fought Ibra Bimo. Yeah, Brock, that's Brock the guy. Bimo. Yeah, he brought him up. Yeah. 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 And uh, then uh, I guess Daniel Dubois had a win. Oh yeah, against the Japanese over. guy with the red, the carrot top. The carrot top, who <laughs> fought That's split, one decision, fat carrot, man. split decision win over Ishida. Yeah. Who Ishida, Triple G, knocked out of the out of the ropes as a Ishida, somehow a former middleweight, middleweight, <laughs> middleweight, but he was like six foot four. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. Sheeta hold, held that win against uh, James Kirkman. Yes, remember? I was there. And so we had picked uh, Sheeta, and people, I don't know why they were criticizing that, because he actually went, remember, he also he went, went the, the distance, distance with Paul Williams and, and, and uh, Pirog. Pirog. in, in, in uh, Yeah. In, oh, he's a tough Russia. guy. Yeah, that was and, a right hand. That was, wasn't Kirkland. that like an overhand right that uh, Golovkin yeah, landed, and, and man, him, he was like out of the ring. Halfway, yeah, like up halfway. to his waist. Yeah. Crazy. That was another emotional victory. Remember, that was right after the tsunami in Japan. Yeah, I think it was that week right after, and uh, Ishida had that big win over Kirkland yeah. up in uh, up in Las Vegas. So how about I if we that? do the uh, fight of the year? I call them year end awards. Yeah. Year end awards. How many are we gonna get? Yeah. You have your. Uh, I, I have what are your we haven't had you on, uh, Coach. What are your? Oh, picks? it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, the fight of the year for sure was uh, AJ Ruiz won. That's, really? That's, that's not my pick. That, that, it's not even close. I mean, I was so excited. I watched that fight like 20 times after. Are you it. jumping up on, in front of the TV? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, on your I, phone? Was I, it streamed on your phone? It turned me on so much, I can't tell you. But The, the atmosphere inside the, the, Madison Square Garden. You were there, you were there with so the Triple G. Yeah, the that was the week before the Triple G fight. Yeah, so, uh, uh, it was uh, unforgettable. Atmosphere. Yeah. I just, that's my fight of the year, but... That, that's my upset of the year. Yeah, well, I... Sh I and that's, and uh, that's also my event of the yeah, year. Yeah, I was going to say, that's my event of the year, but yeah. my fight of the year... What do you got? The new t-shirt? Oh, fighter oh, of the year. Blair, Blair no, the player. Fight of the year. Fight Not of fighter year. of the year. Oh, which one fight. was that? Oh, Steve uh, Villalobos? That was that a hell was of a fight. That was my fight of the year. That was... That was the most exciting fight. It was so much fun. Yeah. No, that was no one. I mean, no it's one. It's a good day, hey, folks. Look that fight out. That, that Blair fight. Cobbs, Steve wow. Villalobos, and he both, knocked, un, uh, both undefeated. Yeah, they're both the they're both the 11, 0, oh, and one. Yeah. Both of them. But Villalobos a, is a tough cat. He's tough, and and Cobbs. I mean, it was just he got knocked down uh, and was hurt. Back. Got up on no, wobbly he was legs hurt and badly through. came back. Do that again. He got Bobby up on Wobby Leg. He was doing whatever how the kids <laughs> so dance, but he was throwing those punches, lightning speed. Yeah. What's Bill Obos's, uh nickname? <clears throat> I don't know. Villalobos. I mean, isn't that how you pronounce it? Manos de Oro. Manos de Oro. Hands of gold. Hands of gold. Hands of gold. Yeah. Yeah. Hands of gold. Oh. Carlos Navarro. What was his nickname? Do you remember? Uh, Golden Lefty. Yeah. Zordo, 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 Zordo de, 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 de Oro. Yeah. And Carlos was uh, Carlos Navarro is one of the best amateur boxers. Right. So Carlos and uh, Jose Navarro and Nacho Navarro, who I've stayed in contact yeah. with, and that next generation of Navarros now, Chantel, they were both at our uh, Hollywood yeah. fight night. Chantel Navarro <laughs> and Stephen Navarro, yeah. both won yeah. national championships. Yeah. I think Stephen's the eighth national championship, yeah. and Chantel's uh, fifth. And yeah, they're, they're both, both number one rated. Not only that, but they both won outstanding boxer of the tournament uh, for that. Wow, for the that's junior, rare. Junior Are they related to Ruben Navarro? Mm, that I'm not sure. You remember him? Yeah, I think that was not, different. No, yeah, no, they and no David relation. Navarro, who's uh, a couple years older, 18, okay. and he's slated to go to the Olympics. So as well, really? So that next generation mm -hmm. of Navarro. Well, Jose so. made the Olympic team yeah. in, in 2000, yeah. and I, I think Carlos could have made the Olympic team in 1996. Oh, that's a good trivia question. Who did uh, Carlos lose to? Floyd Mayweather. That's right. Last but, he, Floyd Mayweather. but he also beat Mayweather. He beat Mayweather first. Yeah. And then Mayweather came back and beat but him. But the thing and about Carlos is, Carlos was, was a top amateur up. at 119. Right. And, he moved and when to he 125. went up to 125, not quite the right. same. Right. Not quite the same. But still right. terrific. But losing to Floyd. Not, not too shabby. <laughs> Floyd, probably a fighter of the decade. Lose, I think I think end. Floyd will get fighter of the decade. Yeah. Floyd Mayweather is my fighter of the half decade. There you go. <laughs> oh, the fighter, he's oh, fighter, good. he's a fighter of the half decade, 2010 to 2015. So who was a fighter? But my fighter of the entire decade, you used to promote him, Chocolatito Gonzalez. Yeah. That's the man. Can't and argue with the that. King. Chocolatito had a dominant, dominant run. Look at what Chocolatito did right. from 2010 to 2018. 2018 yeah. It's his. He's Eight still the run. king. Still the king. Hey, so who was and the... anyone who disagrees with me is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thought you mellowed out. I did mellow out. Uh, I would say the most. That's mellowing out. I, I could say if you don't agree with me, you're going to go to hell when you die because God loves chocolatito. <laughs> I'm a little. But I won't go. I won't get all <laughs> fire and brimstone this, hey, on you fools. Who was the fighter of the decade of the '80s? Um, it would be I, I, my choice. Would be Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, he was. Well, I don't Officially, know. You could, you could, I mean, there's an argument to be. I mean, listen. You could you could make an argument for fi the fighter of the decade, your favorite fighter, uh, Andre Ward. 
You could look at his resume. You could say Canelo Alvarez. Just looking at the names that he beat, even though he had the setback against Mayweather. That's one you could say Manny even though, Pacquiao. Even he vacated his yeah. You could say, and Manny Pacquiao was the boxing writers <laughs> oh, associate of, of America. He was their choice of the fighter of the of the two thousands. He was fighter of the decade. Yeah. He actually beat out Americans. An American Boxing Association chose Manny Pacquiao, a fighter from yeah, two thousand to two thousand and nine. And you look at what Manny he did. Good. You're like. And look at him now. Yeah, it's crazy. And he came back now. He beat uh, Keith Thurman. <coughs> he's so a player. Manny, That's, he's Manny a, he's has a, a good yeah. argument. Manny is a is a legitimate candidate for fighter of the decade. Two 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 decades in okay. a row. I would which agree. Is unheard of. Based on dominance, I would agree on Chocolatito. Just on the, who we fought. Who we fought. Going up those <laughs> divisions. The accomplishments and, and how. And being marketable, he was selling out arenas. Also, sold out when he did this. We did the Superfly shows. Tiny sold out the, the Forum. Yeah. Sold out StubHub. So I think you got to put everything. New York City. They came out for him. Into, into that, uh, into that but fighter, man, these dudes. The but these dudes, he fought guys like like um, Juan Francisco Estrada, Brian Valoria, who yeah. I think is a borderline yeah. Hall of Famer, sure. a U.S. Well, Brian, Olympian, yes. 2000 Olympian. Sure. Um, Quadras. Yeah, Carlos Quadras. That was for his fourth world title in a fourth weight class. Sore. He was unbeaten at the time. Sore. I thought he beat so run he, beside yeah, the first fight. The first but yeah. even if you thought he lost, that was like fight of the year. Right. Yeah. I thought it was, it was crazy. Yeah, for that you know, fight. So he was in great. And, and the Estrada fight was sensational. Yeah. I was ringside for that. I was lucky to be too, there yeah. at the sports arena. But, um, man, the Japanese cats that he beat yeah. were, were top of yeah, the first guy in, he in beat Japan, Mr. Mr. Nita. Mr. Honda's that dude was, uh, yeah. Mr. Honda's promotions these guys were the top fighters He, the guys that he beat that he was beating and they, were either, they were either they like were either like some guys get criticized they exactly. were in their prime very competitive they were either future world title holders yeah. or they were current world title holders or they were former right. world title holders that were still on top yeah. of their game yeah. and um, they were they were something else even a royal, it was a solid. Uh, royal, solid, royal yeah. world amateur champion. Yeah. So, Dougie, what was your fight of the year this year? Oh, my fight of the year was Nyoa Inouye versus yeah. Nonito Denier. Hands awesome. down, it was sensational. I was, I mean, I got up at, at, at three o'clock in the morning to watch that card. I watched his younger brother fight and lose, and then I watched him get in there and was, he was taken to the brink. And I thought he was going to get knocked out uh, uh, in the ninth round or the tenth round, and but he came out. And for the 10th round and stole away the veterans momentum and then scored that body shot knocked down in round 11. another referee would have stopped the fight as a matter of fact but i'm glad that uh, donaire was, was allowed to continue yeah. it was it was an absolutely sensational fight he fought through adversity he had to cut he had the blurry vision he had the busted nose i mean uh, donaire brought out that was the a, elite boxer that was a super actually the, the elite fighter Superhuman effort by uh, Nonito. By both guys. Yeah. That's also, uh, we're concurring. That's my fight of the year also because I, I also got up early. I watched it. We worked with, uh, we worked with Inoue on, yeah. on Superfly 1. Yeah, Inoue's yeah. U.S. debut was on your yeah. card, Superfly. Right. Superfly 1. Against uh, that's, that's Antonio, history now. <laughs> Antonio, Antonio Nieves. But you got to yeah. give Nonito credit. Right. I actually thought the odds were totally stacked in uh, Inoue's favor. Being in Japan, being the big puncher. And you gotta give uh, Nino, and Nonito was also on uh, Superfly, yeah. or no, on the Triple G show. Remember when he fought Nicholas Walters? But uh, yeah. but uh, Nonito rose up and, uh, like you say, came up and, and was fighting, actually pushing him back at some yeah. point, and that was uh, really impressive. So that was that was a great fight and a great atmosphere. Also sold out. Uh, yeah, like twenty thousand sold, sold out arena. Over like there. So you, not only do you have to have great fights, but you need the atmosphere around them, and like Chocolatito would, and Inouye, and, and that's what really it makes fans differentiates. It makes fans, yeah. and it makes the networks happy. That's right. And then they say, hey, we're all in on boxing. Yeah. And that's that's, right. that's what the sport needs. It yeah. needs those supporters yeah. on the broadcast side, the sponsor side. So I, obviously the fans. You need fan support. I would say even though with the Chocolatito being part of the decade, I, I would say in that decade, there was no one that had a more dominant run than Triple G, though. Coach has I think You know, G I think the hoodie. BWAA dissed him. I don't think they listed uh, Roman either. Gonzalez is one of the they candidates, put, but put Roman Gonzalez anyone ask me, it's Roman Gonzalez. I would, I would agree with that. Yeah. And that, you know, when you say that on Twitter, you get a lot of nitwits, but well, they just expose themselves. That aren't familiar with I know the lighter, they're ignorant. No, that's, that's not an insult. Being right. ignorant, there's no sin being ignorant. You right. just need to educate you need to yourself. Expand your yeah. white classes. Yeah, your, expand your right. Ex expand your horizons. Exactly. Don't be so narrow. Don't be narrow-minded. Chocolatito was always an exciting fight. And, he, and, and he, honestly, he should have been in everybody's top 10 going back to 2011. <laughs>
I mean, he was, he was, I considered him a top 10 pound for pound fighter in, in 2012. Yeah. He wasn't in the Ring Magazine's rankings because I couldn't convince the ratings panel to put him in there because there was a lot of He nitwits. only got the popularity or the recognition, not the popularity, the recognition. When he fought on HBO. Yeah, he got on HBO. He, when we paired him, arguably the two best pound for pound fighters at the time was Chuck Petito and the co-feature in Triple G as a yep. main event. And that's what the fans they were one and two. The, the, the top two guys at that time, selling out arenas. And making fans happy. Those were great. Those were great because they were, they were very, if they didn't, if it wasn't just a great, you know, 12 round fight, then they knocked it, they got, they didn't play with their food. If they were, if the opponent wasn't in their class, they got rid of them in a couple of rounds. When Triple G, you saw all the Cossack flags in there, but then you would also see Nicaraguan flags, sure. flags in the Madison Square Garden also were oh, yeah. the form. Yeah, they came out. They, they did. So, what else do we have? Uh, what else do we have to cover? We got uh, so Murata. Oh, we got to talk about the fight or the fighter of the year. Fighter of the year, also. But we got Murata's coming up in Japan. Oh, that's right. He's fighting Steve Butler He's from Montreal. Fighting the third in Japan. So I don't know. I think it might be the evening here in, yeah. in the U.S. Uh, tonight. Uh, he's fighting Murata. Chapatito's on that show. Speaking the of comeback, Chupatito. the king returns. Yeah. Everybody. King returns to his throne. Yeah. And uh, well, I don't know if he's going to get all the way back to the throne. I mean, once a king, always a king. They gotta be careful. I mean, he's, he's fighting kind of a, a soft guy, right? It's like an eight rounder or that, something. That's sort of like a comeback. Fight. Yeah, good. That's fair. That's on uh, take a promotion to <coughs> Mr. Honda's show over there. So, who's your fighter of the year? I think it's uh, Canelo. Yeah, I go with Canelo. The fights, the fights weren't like fight of the year candidates. Although the, the knockout of Kovalev, maybe that's a KO of the year candidate. Um, but um, I look at this year, very special year, because there were so many. Title unification bouts, champion fighting champion. And great fights. Yeah, and, and they were great fights, right? So it started off with uh, 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 Danny Roman against TJ Dohenny in March. That was uh, two 122 pound title holders. Great fight. Great guys. And and then we Hooker got uh, and, uh, yeah, Ramirez, Ramirez and Hooker. And was, they were two champions. And that was a fun yeah. shootout. Yeah. Uh, that was at 140. Yeah. And then also at 140, you had Josh Taylor and Regis Progray. That was a yeah. sensational fight. Josh Taylor had a great yeah. fight, yeah. Yeah. And you can't take anything away from Progre going all the way over there. No, yeah. Progre's awesome. Difficult conditions over there. I love him. Uh, I love Progre. You know, he works, he works out. Well, he lives here now, yeah. He trains at, uh, trains at Churchill. At yeah. Churchill, yeah. Uh, and then you had at Welterweight, you had Errol Spence against uh, Sean Porter. That was a sensational right. fight. Good fight. Um, fight. You had That's the light fight. heavyweights, Better Be Ev and uh, Vosdick. Right. Wow. right? So many good fights. And so, so all those guys, to me, are... are Fighter of the Year candidates, candidates for, yeah. for 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 You're taking one that guy risk, though. Yeah. but 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 to me Canelo, he unified against Danny Jacobs, Danny Jacobs. Yeah, and then yeah. he did the yeah. he leapfrog uh, 168, and he fought a top light heavyweight title holder in Kovalev, and to me that was historic because so you're a reigning first time that that's ever happened in boxing history. Well, a reigning middleweight champion. The well, the last time a, a reigning middleweight champion tried to win. The light heavyweight title was in 1952, and that was Sugar Ray Robinson against Joey Maxim. He fell short because of the heat, but um, it's never been accomplished. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm into boxing history. So when you make history, it's like okay. And he's not he's not like one of these dudes. He's not like built like Roy Jones or Bernard Hopkins, where he's like six foot tall, and he's got like a long reach. You know, he's like five eight. You know, I, I think it's harder to put on that weight and fight effectively. And in fact, he didn't fight that effectively. I mean, Kovalev was able to outmaneuver him and, and outjab him. So Triple G used to spar with Kovalev up at yeah. the training camp. That but was it, another. You it's know, hard, you but, know. Uh, yeah. So you he know, would so, get the edge. Put it yeah. that way, he would get the edge. So, the so Canelo is is only the fourth former junior middleweight champion to win a version of the light heavyweight title. And so that's a group that Danny includes Jacobs Tommy Hearns. Yeah. Yeah. Danny Jacobs a solid win, and then a historic. And yeah. Like that. Right. Yeah. But it's not, it's not, Canelo's not like Tommy Hearns, where he's like six foot, six foot one with a 78 inch wingspan, where you could put on that weight, but you're like the same stature yeah, as a light heavyweight, you know? He's barrel chested. Yeah, he's, he's a stocky, stocky dude. Yeah. He's, he's like more, like Hagler, was like, you know, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, you know, like a little stocky, or Dick Tiger, who is a, one of the few middleweight champions to win the light heavyweight championship. But it's rare. It's rare that it happened. A lot of people were hoping he'd do the Triple G fight for third fight. Yeah, including the zone. Yeah, of course. You know, but, you know, you can't take anything away from fighting goal of it. It was kind of built in, like you said, with a historic. Yeah. Historic, uh, who, who did you pick, Coach, for Fighter of the Year? 
Big you Andy guys, Ruiz. you guys won't agree with me. Yes, we will. There's no right answer. I'm picking Andy Ruiz. Oh. Well, probably? he would have been a lock if he would have won the No, uh, I don't even match. care. I don't okay. care. I, I think that that one win yeah. overtakes everything yeah. else. It was so, I mean, it was unexpected, but he fought a great fight. He really did. He did. And uh, and it I, transcended boxing. Can't argue. I, you can't, matter of fact, can't it transcended sports. Yeah, that really upset yeah. was like. Yeah. It was huge. People who knew yeah. nothing about boxing were aware of that. To I mean, me, was that was the second that what I saw, not live, but uh Tyson, I'd still say, was the biggest upset. Sure. Tyson uh, and Buster Douglas, but yeah. right up there, it was, it was there, right <laughs> up there with the Ruiz but I'm not and uh, Anthony it. Joshua, because yeah. the last minute replacement. Yeah. Just the whole deal. It was all the odds good, but, were stacked but against him. Listen, Andy, I know you're watching. You tried to get a hold of me. You reached out, but you left the wrong phone number. So call me back, leave the phone number, I'll call you, we'll meet, and I guarantee you I change your life. Instead of buying Rolls Royce, he needs to buy a Kia, right? Come. Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to talk about Come that's, buy rent wreck that's, that's part of the deal. Go yeah. Buy, go buy the boxing no, but gym. That, that fight, I mean, that was yeah. really... And then... Uh, that, I get it. I get your reasoning. Uh, yeah. On the zone, you know, that thing they put out with uh, Sylvester Stallone. One, oh, one night. One, one night. night. Excellent wow. documentary. Oh, I went to that premiere. Yeah, I went to that yeah. premiere. That was, uh, that, that, was, was, that was well done. That's really well yeah, done. Mike Tyson stole that show. Yeah, he did. Totally. Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson has Tyson a great one-liners. He has a great oh, sense Tyson of humor still. Great. No, he's and, a... Uh, yeah, he's really... He's going to mature into a, a racket. What do you call it? Raconteur? How do you <laughs> say it? Well racket, his, you know what I mean? His, like a good... Just like a good storyteller. He's, like he's like an elder statesman. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, he's gonna he'll be the elder statesman. But he's also doing well in business now. Also, he's Thank involved goodness. in a few different companies. And you see, uh, there's an interview on Twitter that he did a while back. Yeah, that your guy was asked him a question. Uh huh. You know the the guy that used to work for uh, you guys. Asked him a question at a, at a press conference. Oh, uh, Peter Palmieri. Yeah. <laughs> God, that was crazy. And, and You're going way back. You're going back to 2000. I know, but it was incredible. That was, was a, incredibly the, good. the Century City press conference for Tyson versus Andrew Galata. Yeah. And Mike was, he was, he was off. He was off the rails. He was point. still good, though. Oh, no. He, and he looked he great. He wasn't taking the meds. <laughs> oh, he was on the meds. He was on, he was on and off, and that's not good. Yeah. And, and you know, whatever. He was hanging around. And he's full of drill. Yeah, you know, but yeah, he was, but he fought better when he was angry. That's for sure. When, when he was knocking like Frank Bruno, when he was intimidating guys oh, before yeah. he got even got sure, in the ring. Sure, yeah. the speed, the power, yeah. The, yeah. the foot movement. Well, they they all lost before they got in the ring. Yeah. And remember that one fight where he was going down so low and then yeah. he came back up and knocked yeah. him down. He Tyson was good for boxing. What else? Made a lot of fans. What else do we have? Well, you got, I have a whole bunch of questions, now? but uh, yeah, we're going to we the highlights. Save, but I think, you know, we're trying to make this short. Everyone's got to go Christmas shopping. Dougie is leaving for uh, Arizona today. Tom just got back from Japan. Just got back Japan, Austria, Germany. <laughs> and then I, before that, I was in Monte Carlo with uh, Cecilia Breckles. Yeah. Oh, Cecilia had a big yeah, win. Yeah, Cecilia had a big win. First lady of uh, had boxing. Had a big win. She seems yeah. continuing her dominance. And uh, you like how she looked um, after her first camp with Abel Sanchez? Thought she looked good. Thought she looked very good. Thought her confidence was there. That's uh, what it's all about. Jonathan yeah. Banks was a great, is a great trainer for her. Yeah. Uh, very, you know, the two fights on HBO. She was yeah. with uh, JB, and uh, he did very well from the German style. Yeah. And she was in camp for a long time with uh, Abel. I think like four months. Sure, that's good. Uh, she looked good. Pretty well, Abel's got his own system, so I think it yeah. takes she a good. while to acclimate to that, take to it. Sometimes change is just good. A lot of times, yeah. change is just good. You know, yeah. just to get a different rhythm going. Yeah. And I thought she looked really, really good. Yeah. So, uh, so you there's, there's be... potential big fights for her. Yeah. Female Katie boxing. Taylor comes Female up from boxing, lightweight. You know, yeah. Serrano's there. Yeah. Katie Taylor is right. there. Yeah. There's some big fights. Uh, yeah. They're talking about Chris Iborg maybe uh, doing a boxing. Still talking about wow. boxing. Wow. Right. Well, that's yeah. the be that's the ticket yeah. right there. So, yeah. If you can do that, then you do that. I want part of that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so Dougie, are you going to be mellow this year? Are you, are you working on it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, are you I'm driving or flying? With age. Are you driving or flying? We drive. Oh, you're smart because if you're flying, it might take you longer to get to LAX no, than to drive right, to, to it, it Arizona. It all evens out. Plus, road we, trips we are fun. I, I landed. I was in, <laughs> let, let's see, I was in Nice Airport. I was in Zurich Airport. Narita. I was in Tokyo Airport, Narita. Narita's nice. I was in Munich. <laughs> 
and all of them, all those airports, don't compare to uh, LAX. This is horrendous. Whatever they've done they down there is, is crazy. Yeah. The, the traffic lines, the congestion. You, you Dave, remember, you remember handsome the, the, Joe Hernandez? At the, at the bright Dave? side of that. Yeah. Boxing man. I remember yeah. Joe Hernandez. Yeah. Sure. Say we, say we're in that. We're in Narita Airport, and he's just like. They're better than us. <laughs> it's, it's it's the bathrooms, the cleanliness, the orderliness. You ever been the, to Long Beach? The way, the way, the way like, you know, they have a lot of shops there. You can buy clothes yeah. and shoes. And that actually probably generates more revenues than most of those put together, and they still it can't get it together. But it's not, it's not a pleasant they experience. Can't get it together, so it's, no. kinda, it's just kind of chaotic. Whatever, whatever they're doing yeah. down there is not working. Yeah. Whoever's listening from the but, airport commission need to do something. Uh, but customs even, like, it's just, it's mellow, it's calm, it's That's right. polite, airport, it's civil. Going through their passport control. No yeah. one's no one's yelling right. at you, get in this line over here, right. throw out your water, right. take your shoes off, right. all the uh, right. And when you get used to that, then you come back to this, you're like, oh, it's like... You stress out. It's like, Man, what's wrong with the us? visitors to LA, the visitors, that, that's the first thing they get first exposed to. First thing they get, they welcome to America. That and then the traffic and Slap, then man, Welcome that. to LA, yeah. yeah. You can't find the Ubers yeah. anymore. I don't even know how to, I don't know how to get out. No, it's, it's like this long yeah, uh, trail of tears, yeah, yeah, this long track yeah. over to that little park area where you're getting... So how, do you, how are you supposed to drive? What's your no, advice? First of all, I respectfully disagree with you totally okay, you about go. LAX. Yeah. It's all... It's all your mindset. It's all how you're looking at it. I mean, like, but the I people that arrive, they don't I'm know flying, how to. They don't I'm know flying, how. To, no, early, what to early next year. All you have to do is you just year, mellow so out right and you flow with it and you yeah. say, "This is a great adventure." Tip, just get there yeah. early. Get there like uh, three uh, hours. Forget about two hours. Leave like three hours yeah. early to get there. Hey, Tom, I know. And a then good just trip. hang out at the yeah. at the restaurants. There. I know a very good shrink for you. They did. They do. They do have nice restaurants. They do. Chick Fil A is in one of the terminals. At LAX. At LAX, yeah. So exactly. you can definitely you have chicken. I've never had chicken. Oh, oh, it's is great. it good? Yeah, it's a large chicken. It's, uh, <laughs> oh. it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. They're closed on Sundays. Are they really? Yeah, yeah they're closed on yeah. Sundays. Yeah. Well, then go to Popeyes on Sundays. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but Popeyes apparently... It's the best of both worlds. Don't, don't they run out of the chicken sandwiches? Oh, yeah. They're, they're so popular. Yeah. They're Popeyes. I haven't had one of those, but I hear they're very good. That's what I heard. Popeyes, yeah. I'm not, I'm not waiting in line for one. No, but they do, they do have very nice restaurants there at LAX. Yeah, they do. So you have something good to say about LAX. That's good. Yeah. You're getting there. The restaurants. Yeah. That's that's restaurants. Once you get there, yeah. that's you the can first, hang out that's at the, the restaurants. Well, Tom gets in a good one. Tom's like Steve Kim. He gets there. First thing he has is a Bloody Mary that's this tall of like bacon sticking out of it. <laughs> the Steve Kim story, we got, our flight got canceled from New York. Uh, we were stuck in one of the airports and I think we had like five Guinness beers. Oh, jeez. I, I got Steve. To drink his first Guinness. You I did? turned him on to Guinness. Right, well, yeah. I, I continued that streak yeah, for you. I don't drink Guinness anymore. <laughs> Guinness and, and drinking coffee has turned my teeth. like my, my teeth look like toast. Nothing I can do to... I'm like a honorary Brit with the bad teeth. And then <laughs> on your way to LAX, how do you drive, coach? You let everyone in front of you? Everyone. Just let everyone go in front of you. Just be happy. Yeah. Keep a lot of distance. Yeah. Drive slow. Have don't great drive thoughts. Fit. How, how much you love everybody. Some people took offense to Brian and Kenny's uh, advice to uh, Errol Spence about uh, drive safe. I like that drive safe. No, I, he cares he about it. Yeah. Yeah. He wants he you to it, stick around, He did dude. it in a positive way, but yeah. somehow people were taking yeah, on social media. Man. Hey, you know, that was, was a great That was a very good interview. interview. I like Brian Kenny. I think he's, oh, he was, he's it was great. Interview, yeah. It was all good. You said he was like Switzerland. He, he did uh, the zone show. The zone on Friday night and Fox on Saturday. Yeah. So I give him credit. That. He has diplomatic immunity in this fractured boxing go. world. And, I think and why he's, not? He's very talented. He's an elder statesman. But it's been like, fractured like for Tyson. years. Like Aram King. That's true. What, it, what, what does Brian Kenny and Mike Tyson have in common? They both live in the same town. Yeah, I think they're both cat skills. They have the cat yeah. skills. That connection to the to the to custom models place because the the lady they cuss live with Camille yeah. Edwards. Yeah, Camille. I think I think uh, Kenny has a connection to her. So I wonder what Kenny Hard thinks about Max Kellerman now, because he's the one that really like he, did. he, he was his so manner. Much. Yeah, Max Kellerman's gone crazy. Yeah, 
Wow. But I think I think that's on, uh, don't you think that's ESPN? part and parcel yeah. of being a sports talking head? No, oh, totally. You and being with that guy, yeah, uh, Stephen A. Stephen A. But I Stephen mean, A. That's him. That's, yeah. that's natural. I know. I like it, Stephen but A. But it's not Max. Yeah. And Max is trying to be right. Trying to keep up with him. Stephen A. Anyway, it's all good. It's, it's, it's tough. There's a lot of pressure doing doing what he does. But I I really like and I like Max a lot, but I can't listen to him. What about Tim Bradley? Tim okay. Bradley too. I like him a lot too, but he's gone crazy. He's going off the rails. Same, same way. I like Timmy. I like Timmy. No, I like him. I, I, like, his, I, I like his emotion. You know? Yeah. He doesn't always hit the point, but he gets no. he gets very passionate about yeah, it. Yeah. Sometimes I think he does go overboard. And, uh, and, got and it. I call that uh, Teddy Atlas. That's it. That's it. You're Andrew Teddy Atlas. It happens. So, I tell you, uh, Teddy was very anti Triple G, but then with the Canelo fights, he was very yeah. supportive of Triple G. So that means you know. he's more anti Golden Boy than he is anti Triple G. <laughs> so the the oh, enemy so that, of my so enemy <laughs> is my friend. So I think that's what that's all okay. about. It could be. That's fine. It could be. Yeah. That's boxing. So when are you coach. coming back, Dougie? I'll, I'll be back before New Year's. Oh, okay. What's your uh, What's your year end advice to everyone, Coach? The same. It's all the same. Just be mellow, be happy, love everyone, drive carefully. My only concern about if you let everyone in at LAX, normally that works if you're on the freeway, let people no, in. No, no, it's it, it LAX, works. you might actually go backwards no, if you're letting people in. There's so much people, so people you know, trying to get into the airport in their cars. You Tom might be going they, <laughs> they have meetings for this, yeah. Tom. And I'm going to get you the meetings. I think you should go to a few. It was disastrous. <laughs> it's not. It is... I walked all the way from the International Terminal all the way to Terminal 1 oh, yeah. because the driver couldn't get into the you airport. Know, you know how to look so at long. that? You know how to look at that? That was great. It's good exercise, yeah. Very good exercise. <laughs> but can you imagine, can you imagine the sidewalks aren't wide enough to have two carts? You have to wait. Yeah. You have to wait until they go this way until so, you can go that way. What's wrong with that? It's an obstacle course and it's good exercise. So it's testing your reflexes and your yeah, exercise. Get your coach. heart rate up. You yeah. break a sweat. You know, there you go. You All right. Be, so we're, I guess hey, we're going to start. You know, being patient. Is do you really, want to do one or two questions? Being you want to do, patient like, is such a great thing. You want to do a couple of your you top know, questions? My questions are so obscure today. A lot of people, a lot of people doubt uh, Doug's. Uh, well, okay, I'll just give, I'll give you a couple. Some days, uh, some days are better than okay? others. Okay. I'll give you this. Okay. The blade. The blade. That's, That's Iran Ira, Barkley. Ira Barkley. Okay. Yeah. okay, now I'm going to give you this. The quiet man. John Ruiz. Okay. There you go. Now I want to ask you some questions first, about... First Latino I want, heavyweight champ. And where is he from? Uh, he's from Massachusetts. Yeah, and where was where's his heritage? Oh, Puerto Rico. Right. Puerto Rico. Okay, so I got a few questions about him. About the quiet man? Norman yeah. Stone was his trainer. There he goes. Yeah. Stoney. Wow. There's Stoney. The How would he like LAX? Oh, oh man. He'd, he'd play get a little gasket. Yeah, he'd get arrested. <laughs> yeah. He'd have a stroke. Who, who punched a Norman Stone? Alton Murkison. Yeah. Coach Murk. Coach Murk. I was there. Did he score the knockout or knockdown? Yeah. yeah he man, yeah. he laid him out. Yeah. I was at the weigh-in for uh, Roy Jones Jr. Yeah. versus the Quiet. He didn't man. take your advice. Norman Stone didn't take your advice about being mellow. No, but, but he's he, Boston. He, no, he, he can't, can't be mellow. No, he can't. You can't. Bostonians are hot. Well, we know one guy, uh, Larry. Oh, this Coach was. Uh, Larry. I, didn't, I didn't talk about the shirt. We got the uh, the Chivas uh, House of United. This is Chivas sponsors of Manchester United. Triple G did an appearance for uh, Chivas at a, a viewing party for one yeah. of the uh, Manchester. So I'll ask Manchester you this, games. Dougie. All right. Okay. Who did Ruiz's first chance at the heavyweight title? That came against first Evander chance. Holyfield in no. 2000. No. His first world title, his first title shot? It was a different, it was an IBO title. Oh, IBO. Yeah. <laughs> Let me, this is before. The guy was 15 and one who he fought. He lost a, uh, he lost a um, Ruiz? split decision, Ruiz. 15 and 1 heavy was it uh, was it Kirk Johnson where, where, he fought him though. where was he from where was I don't know where he's from oh uh, no I don't I'll give you his first name it's his first name it's like a boy Danelle huh Danelle Nicholson yeah you got you got it before you yeah you did it was okay but yeah. Yeah. okay Danelle Nicholson was from Detroit yeah Okay, now who did? Uh... He was one of the sparring partners. Yeah, oh, I, I, hey, yeah, I got, I got some trivia for you. 
Who who gave Danelle Nicholson that loss? Was it Lamont Brewster? Nope. No, it was on net. It was on. It was on network television. Okay, I'll tell prospects. you who it was. I'll tell you who it was. And he's kind of local. He's a Southern California. Oh, very old. And this dude knocked out Nicholson in two rounds yeah, on CBS. Oh, Saturday man. afternoon. That's a few years ago, CBS TV. Yeah. Showing boxing. Yeah. And this dude, as an amateur, was like a legendary, like with the golden gloves, because he knocked so many guys out. But he was a light heavyweight. I'm the giving Greenland? some good. I'm I giving know, some that's good. good. Who was it? You want me to give you one more hint? You'll get it. If I give you this last hint, you'll, 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 you'll get him right away. If you don't get him right away, no, I don't know. I'm going to take I'm, back those I'm hoodies. giving up. <laughs> if I, I, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you one last hint. Okay. He's he's, Sanders. Yeah. No, he's uh, he's from Long Beach. Oh, okay. I got it. Oh, oh I got it. Yeah. No, no. no. If you don't get it, I'm taking no, the hoodies. No, no. Wait, back. wait. Just a minute. He, he even came to my place yeah. to watch the fights. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> take it. I'm take the damn hoodies back. I'm going to give them to somebody watching this. This. I remember. Come on, yeah, you're right, Jay. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, come on, wait. guys. Damn. Let's see if they're getting. Yeah, they're getting Fat Sinatra. You got it, Fat Sinatra. Come on, these guys beat you. You guys are boxing guys. I remember because he was he used to hang out with Floyd Olson. <laughs> That's good yeah. trivia. Uh, who who uh, gave the Bell Nicholson I mean, his I, first I, loss? I can I picture him. But no, and what I'm saying is yeah. it was kind of significant because they were huh. both like 10 and 0 prospects yeah, right. fighting yeah. on network television. Right. Yeah, he was a big puncher. Oh, huge. Puncher. Huge puncher at 178 in the amateurs. Oh and then he turned pro. Maybe his first fight was cruiserweight. Yeah. And then he said, hell with it. I'm going to heavyweight. Right. And he was still, and he was trained by Mike Tyson's trainer. Our former trainer. Kevin Ring. Kevin Ring. Yeah. Yeah, I blinked out. I got it. All right. All right. I'm going to, you know what? What's you can have it. Jeremy Williams. Oh, yeah, Jeremy, that's right. Y'all oh, forgot about Jeremy. Now, I didn't now, know. now I what didn't was his nickname? He had a fighting nickname that he stole from a basketball player. Yeah, half man, half amazing. Oh, oh yeah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's okay. not really a good boxing nickname. So okay. uh, Danelle Nicholson fought this guy Everett Martin. Oh yeah, Everett Big, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Big, yeah. You got it, Bigfoot. Okay. Oh, that okay, was where, that was where, where is he from? Everett, Everett Martin. Martin. Yeah. I don't know, like Virginia or something like that. Tyler, Texas. Oh, Tyler, Texas. Said, I want to ask you a question. Texas. What other big heavyweight is from Tyler, Texas, who fought? George Foreman? No, he you never heard of him, but he fought uh, Bob. Houston. He bought, fought Bob Albright twice at the Hollywood Legion Stadium in 1959. Hollywood Legion Stadium. Uh, you were was, there, was, right? was he, a, was he a, a contender? No. <laughs> How would we get this thing? Going? Yeah, that's going too obscure. <laughs> the, the viewers are starting. I to, told you. Yeah, no, because I sort of had. Uh, Tell us more acid. about Jeremy Williams. B B yeah. Buddy Thurman. Okay, Buddy well, Thurman. Yeah, but I want to ask you this: What's the area code for Tyler, Texas? <laughs> and the zip code. I know that's where he had one of his affiliates from Renner. It is. Yeah, yeah, I have you know, no idea. <laughs> Okay, what's the what's the population of Tyler, Texas? <laughs> You're getting this. <laughs> I'm gonna say yeah, yeah. it's a hundred miles from Dallas. All right, I'm gonna say uh, fifteen thousand. Exactly. Bam! Wow! Bam, How did you know that? Just, that was you, a wild you guess. You read this? No, wild guess. Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. <laughs> right. okay. okay. I take away those more nicknames pumps. on their coach. I do have some more nicknames. Okay. The, the, the guys like the nicknames. You got Bigfoot. Oh, oh yeah, people are never big. Yeah, Everett Martin. I, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Jeremy. Forgot Jeremy Williams. Jeremy. Do you know why they called him Bigfoot? He was just hairy. He had hair on his shoulders. <laughs> he was a hairy black dude, man. <laughs> but he was a small guy. He wasn't like a, he didn't have big feet. <laughs> okay, who was the original <laughs> Golden Boy? Art Aragon. Art Aragon. Yeah. Okay. Who named Oscar Golden Boy? Uh, John Bay Rudy. Yeah. Doing PR for for, uh, for the forum. No, I want to ask you this: yeah. Who was a matchmaker for forum boxing? Uh, that was uh, John Jackson. He was a promoter. Oh, he was a promoter. Oh, yeah. uh, Antonio Curtis. Tony Curtis, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And who? Okay. And who yeah. was the heavyweight that used to fight at the forum? Who was the? Oh, out of St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, yeah St. Louis, oh, Missouri. Um, uh, Your man, the Hammer, uh, Ed the Hammer. 
Mahone. Mahone. Good, Ed That's Mahone. Right. Very good. Related to Rick Mahone. Okay. From, uh, okay. Where Where was? Uh, nah, uh, okay. So Oscar was. The, <laughs> who did Who did Ed lose to uh, in his first world title fight at heavyweight? Uh, it was one of the Klitschko. Was it yeah. uh, Vitaly? Vitaly Klitschko for WBO championship. And that's how you 19, connected with Klitschko. That might have been that's that might have been Vitaly's first offense after beating um, that British dude. Herbie Hyde. Herbie Hyde. Okay, I want to ask yeah, you. First, first Where defense. was Oscar's right. first pro fight? At, at the, the Forum. No, it's at the Forum. Forum. At the Forum. Englewood. That's right. Where was his second pro fight? At the Olympic. No. No. You know, I do. Yeah. Was it Vegas? No. The Beverly Wilshire Hotel. Oh, that's really? right. That's when yeah. uh, Bob was doing those shows. At yeah. The Beverly, Beverly Wilshire. Wilshire. Yeah. 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 Okay, so do you know who uh, Oscar's first opponent was? Lamar something? You got it. Uh, wow. Yeah. That is good. I What's Jeremy's the... last name? What? What's Jeremy's last name? Uh, Williams? Yeah. Lamar Williams? Yeah. It's <laughs> a nice name. Lamar Williams. <laughs> he was five and one. Yeah. No, he was solid. Oscar's yeah. first opponent. I think... What 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 fight did Oscar fight uh, Jeff Mayweather? It was early, like maybe his fourth or fifth fight. That was, I mean, that wasn't bad. Is that when the rivalry started between Oscar and, <laughs> and <the> Mayweather? <laughs> Jeff was too too intelligent to be embraced by the Mayweather clan at that time. <laughs> now, actually, Jeff was Jeff was an integral part of Floyd's team. Yeah. Jeff was kind of like the, the the de facto manager before uh, James James Prince got involved with Mayweather. Yeah, Jeff Jeff's a sharp guy, good good little boxer too. Didn't have much power, but he was crafty. I, I used to like watching him. All right, well, you know, I think we're gonna end Jazzy it on that. Jeff. That was good. Yeah, Jazzy, yeah, yeah. that's you're talking about nickname. Jeff Jazzy Mayweather. Jeff Mayweather. That's right. That yeah. was a good nickname. Yeah, yeah, I like him. So. Well, uh, Everyone's got to have a great Christmas. Yeah. Great Enjoy year. the holidays. Don't drink too much. Don't have eat fun. too much. Be happy. Love everyone. Get your rest. Are you going to be back next Sunday from Arizona? Yeah. yeah I'll be back. So tune in next Sunday. We should be uh, Oh, you'll be. Yeah. You're going to be here, Coach? I'll be here. Do you uh, do you drive there? I drive. drive yeah, it's faster. Do you drive the whole, are you personally or your He wife? just said. Uh, we, we switch off. Yeah. We'll probably stay the night in Blythe because we're going to leave later in the evening. Yeah. So we'll drive out, either stay in Blythe or maybe Fantasy Springs. Yeah, uh, that would be good. Yeah, Fantasy Springs. They have a bowling alley. Palm Springs. Yeah, yeah or maybe stay in Palm Springs, something like that. Yeah, that's good. Anyway. Desert Hot Springs is nice too. Desert Springs. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah. Where do you stay? What's good name? It just Anywhere? depends on you. Yeah. Okay, Desert so, Hot Springs. Uh, just, you know, we have a professional lighting man, photographer, good light, sound right? man. Yeah. Mighty Mike Styles, number one Rams fan. My, is he? Rams are yeah. just eliminated yesterday <laughs> they from, from uh, the playoffs. I, I heard them talking about. Yeah. It. <laughs> you got it. He hey, just thanks, said, I'm thanks, thanks a lot, just Mike. For those who are hey, and we want Sean. And we like the Rams. We like Sean McVay. I love Sean McVay, but feel better, Sean. You didn't look too. A lot good. of the Rams players were uh, big uh, Triple G fans. They, yeah. they came to uh, when he fought for the Forum at the Forum. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we always had a good cross promotion. Oh, that's good. Anyway, uh, be safe over the holidays. Happy, happy New holidays. Year, everyone. Yeah. Right? Happy, Adi and happy New Adi Year, too. Adios. Sayonara. <laughs>